Good morning. This is a Sunday where we find Easter rushing toward us, where we see the beauty of the changing seasons and uh, changing in the right way, by the way, uh, and where we see hints that someday our health might be under some somewhat reduced threat. Uh, we see the numbers going the right way. And of course, we hope that continues. I'm glad I'm with you today. Last week, uh, we were with you virtually. We got bumped off a few times, but we got back on. And um, this is much better. Uh, I, I don't think I'm going to get bumped off here. Well, I hope. <laughs> I say the wrong thing. I don't know. Um, this is the fifth Sunday of Lent. And next week will be Palm Sunday. And uh, these religious markers are ours to remember and uh, focus on and celebrate, actually, um, the last trip that Jesus made before Easter. And uh, this, is the, this is the time when we're aware that Jesus had gone to Bethany. He was in Bethany. In a week's time, he will travel to Jerusalem for what we uh, often call Passion Week. I'm going to say some things today that are self-critical. Understand when I'm talking about criticizing, I'll be talking about criticizing me, not you. I don't want you to try to read more into it than just what I say that is self-critical. Our lesson, scripture lesson this week, will come from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. We will study the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. And uh, this is sometimes titled, uh, Mary Anoints Jesus. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany. The home to the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. Yes, that Lazarus. Uh, there they gave a dinner for him, and Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with them. And uh, Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, which is a ends up uh, being a plant that becomes a uh, an essential oil, and anointed Jesus' feet, and then wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of this perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, and uh, this is the same Judas who was about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold uh, for 300 denarii? and the money given to the poor. And he said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief and he carried the common purse um, and he used to steal from it on a regular basis. And Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. Let's study that scripture in parts. Um, six days before, before the Passover trip uh, in Bethany, there was a large group, a substantial group, um, attending this passage of John, witnessing what was taking place. And Lazarus and his family uh, were there, of course, Jesus, uh, the disciples, and perhaps a few others who, who were in attendance who would uh, follow along and, and uh, help and participate in the travels. After eating, Mary took some perfume and began anointing Jesus' feet. But Judas who uh, kept the wallet, kept the books, 
Uh, in fact, in those days, they didn't use books, but he was the one that uh, kept the coinage. Um, complained about the value of this perfume. And it probably was of a value that would be approximate to a year's wages and was suggesting that it be given to the poor. So um, if what he wanted, if there was something that could be sold for 300 denarii, he's saying, I could put some coins in that purse. And then when I see something, I can dip into the purse. But the purse, it's not like a lady's purse. That's, this is the, like the British use of the, uh, of, of the purse. And I could dip into that and buy things that I want. And we could give some to the poor, yes. Uh, we're going to do that. But, you know, I mean, this could, this could benefit me. And uh, that's what Judas was thinking. And a year's wages, man, uh, okay. We can be poor, but I can have some, I can have some easiness in my life. Well, Jesus then quieted Judas for his interruption and appreciated that he, Jesus appreciated that he was ministered to, uh, at this point, he knew he was close to his death and he appreciated that he was loved and being treated in a special way at this special time. His understanding exceeded the understanding of Judas. It was a very somber moment, other than for Judas, because he's thinking, you know, I, I could use this coin. And, but um, Jesus was letting Mary share with him and was accepting this gift. It rattles me. Uh, and then, then Jesus also went on to say that you'll always have poor people, but that his own life was about to end. Uh, you won't always have me, he said. And that statement put that somber note on this story. And it rattles me when people use this statement to suggest, and I have heard people do this, uh, that uh, giving to the poor is kind of a waste. Uh, it's, it, it's futility. It's, in fact, I have heard people say, giving to the poor is an exercise in futility. And that's not what Jesus is saying. Jesus is not saying, don't give to the poor. You will always have poor people who need, and that's just going to happen. And uh, in our day and age, we look around and we see people who go and enter into a period of need unexpectedly. It might be a tornado, it might be um, a pandemic, it might be uh, a drought, uh, it might be anything that puts them in a position of need. And what Jesus is saying, we should always be taking care of that need. But by the way, we also need to minister to people. And Mary was ministering to my person. So, I don't like to see this scripture used as um, something that uh, threatens our giving to the needy, but I do like to see this scripture read to also include, along with giving to the needy and sharing, we need to share on a personal basis. So let's visit this theme for today to generously share. Um, when I first saw this, I, I have, and we all have these little triggers inside of us that we're going to, oh, wow. Yeah, I know I've got this tool in my toolbox that I can bring out and it's gonna fit this need. And one of the tools in my memory uh, was to talk about learning to share. And I'm, this is one of the beasts self-critical here. I took the theme and I read it. 
I looked at it, I read the scripture, and I thought, hmm, okay, yeah. Well, maybe the tool that I have in my toolbox that I was going to bring out, uh, and I'll tell you the story in a minute, uh, maybe it doesn't exactly fit. And uh, yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> so, but I'm still going to share it. <laughs> it's in my toolbox. So I looked at the, at, at the theme, and the theme is generously share. I really wanted to be emphasizing share, not share the performer, share the, the <laughs> verb, the action. And I tried, and there was no way that I could just drop generously. Generously is too important here. So I looked at this, and I, I looked up the words. And uh, anyway, the word generously is... Uh, as well as other words that end in L-Y, an adverb, and it modifies or describes a verb. Well, we, I'm not an English teacher, I'm, you know, but a verb is an action word. Uh, objects are nouns, verbs are action words, and an action word is something we're going to do, or I know that oversimplifies it, I'm sorry, teachers, but uh, the fact is, you know, that's kind of generously share requires the two words to be together because generously needs a verb and verb might be done wrong unless you do it that way. So it, it, they work together. The word share is a verb or action word. And uh, for the big, big picture, I'm gonna start with share and then add generously to it. We can always share in non-generous ways. This is when the light bulb went off. You can't really use that tool that's in your toolbox because um, you can share in non-generous ways. Indeed, honestly, Judas was saying, I'm gonna share. Yeah, I'm gonna give some of that to the poor, but boy, I've got all of that available when I see something I want. And Judas was okay about sharing because that put 300 denarii in his pocket that he could carry around as he shared a denarii or half a denarii or uh, yeah, hello, or other things that he might share with actual needy people. Oh, and by the way, sharing to him meant it got to share with Judas too. And uh, that, that is not generously sharing. That is sharing in a non-generous way. And I realized that the tool in my toolbox was a non-generously sharing. So here's the story. You've heard it before, you'll hear it again. Uh, some of you young folks who are stepping out to become adults in the world, uh, you may have heard this all your life. Um, some of you older folks, you haven't heard it all your life, but you may have heard it uh, many times in our understanding of each other. As a kid, until we adopted two sisters, our family consisted of parents and four boys. Four boys. I don't, my mom's still alive. I don't know how. <laughs> Honestly, our folks were always careful with money. And if we got treats while, while we were traveling or something like that, uh, many times it was sharing two candy bars between four boys. So half of a candy bar a piece. Well, uh, <laughs> uh, there would be no way that we could do this um, unless we shared that candy bar. And dad had that, well, mom and dad, but it was almost always dad that was the uh, uh, dispenser of these treats. Uh, he would figure out, he knew who the boys were that uh, liked uh, Three Musketeers and who the boys were that liked Milky Way and stuff like that, or Snickers. And, and, uh, and he would, pair us up 
I, okay, who wants the three musketeers? And yeah, I, I do that. And some, one of the other brothers would too. And we, we'd come down to a conclusion where there were gonna be two candy bars. We all knew what they were and we knew who were the participants of that sharing. Uh, typically when he would get back in the car, he would uh, give us the older of each pair the responsibility to break or share or divide the candy. And whoever the oldest one, whoever the divider was, the other one got to pick which half they wanted. Now, if you think about this close, we could get down to a three musketeer or a, a we, we could get down to where we had that thing with an absolutely positively equal number of molecules in each half because nobody wanted to not get their share, their fair share. Well, um, our instructions were such that uh, even as an adult, and I would say as recent as uh, in my 70s, so a couple, just a couple of years ago, all of us boys were in one place at one time, and I asked each of my brothers, without others, without the other brothers around, do you remember how we shared candy bars? Oh, yeah. I mean, this stuck with all of us. This was a seminal part of our learning to share, everybody getting a fair share. I thought that was brilliant. I thought that that's why it's in my toolbox. I could pull that story out and talk about everybody getting their fair share. But since then, I have learned that fairness is not the same as generosity. It's not. Fairness is cool. I want everybody to have a fair shake. But fairness is not the same as generosity. And it is not, certainly not, our theme, generously share. So it may sound like I'm being critical, but I'm not. I'm trying to use a good step as leverage to find and see something perhaps even better. Now I realize that sharing where the objective is for me to protect my fair share, uh, that sharing was the sharing that Judas wanted to see. Judas wanted to see Judas's fair share protected, you know, in that common purse. And I would even go so far as there have been places where this is sometimes called stingy sharing ungenerous sharing. And it's not bad to want fair shares all around, but it's also not generous sharing. My parents were not teaching me wrong. They weren't, te they, were, they were teaching me fairness and I mistook it. My fault, my mistake, I took it as generous sharing, that I was being taught generous sharing, my mistake. Sharing can lead to the desire to be fair. And I was taught to share and I was taught to be fair. And that's not bad. But Judas was taught the same thing and trying to emulate that and make the same thing happen. I was missing the story of Mary and the perfume in Jesus' feet. What story that is. Fairness is good and, is, and, and it is important. But if I can be honest with myself, I want to be more like Mary, a person who gives without counting cost than Judas, who criticizes other people who would like to help minister to Jesus' feet. 
and criticizing the love that is generously sharing. Maybe the difference between sharing and generously sharing may be the absence of community. There was not a big presence of community in what Judas sought, putting the denarii in the common purse so that Judas had a little bank account there, if you will. But there was community in Mary trying to ease, the, trying to make the approach towards death easier for Jesus. I don't know how much she knew or comprehended or understood was going to happen at that point in the next two weeks. But she wanted to ease suffering of Jesus. That's generously sharing. Today, we share a meal. And uh, we do this at a common table, a shared table, and a virtually shared table uh, for us who aren't physically in this location. But we share this common meal. Perhaps we can make this time a meal that we generously share, far, far beyond fairness, but as God's children sharing in community and the blessings that we gain, the blessings that I will gain because I'm sharing this meal with you. Perhaps if we take this as an act, a community act, then uh, this community of all of us uh, will, will gain as a community and generously share. Our church president has called us to form a deeper community. I would go so far as a community that emulates, becomes, and is the kingdom of God on earth. And that that community can be and will be and is a blessing to all people, generously blessing people. He says for us to do this, we must each esteem ourselves. You must esteem yourself. We must esteem each other beyond our understanding of what that means. So we have to learn how, it's, it's, we're gonna to have to learn. You may have to do some self-criticism too. And I did not mean anything bad about my parents, but I had to, I had to overcome what I thought was uh, an accomplishment and understand, ooh, man, it left something to doubt. And then we must esteem all others. Ukrainians and Russians, we must esteem all others greater than we ever could understand what esteem would mean. If we would generously share that community, then we will help to bring about and bring to pass the kingdom of God on earth, in fact, today in reality. Thank you, Jim. All are welcome at Christ's table. The Lord's Supper.